Good evening. I call to order the Lake Havasu City Council regular meeting on Tuesday, March 26, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. We'll now have an invocation from Pastor Tim Giles with Inspire the Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Greg Logan from the Mojave Military Museum. Thank you, guys. What a privilege. The first time in this beautiful new building. I bet you everybody's really excited. Uh, I know I am. So today is the third day of Holy Week, the week right before Easter, where Christians celebrate the uh, Jesus coming, the resurrection of Jesus, where Jesus comes alive again. And uh, today is the third day of Holy Week, and that's the day of fruit, or no fruit, the day that Jesus found the fig tree, and there was no fruit on the fig tree. So my prayer for us today is that we would be fruitful. The Bible says God is pleased very pleased when we are very fruitful. So today I want to pray that we would be a fruitful body and do God's work here in the city, right? Okay, would you pray with me? Father God, I come to you in prayer in the name of Jesus, and I ask that you make us fruitful. Give us wisdom and strength. Grant our leaders wisdom and direction that we would lead our lives in godliness and peace. Help us to please you. Forgive us when we don't please you. We're here to support and guide the community that we love, that you love, Lake Havasu. Thank you for being with this body of leaders and advocates, that we would have your blessing and grace to be fruitful. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Let's uh, please follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now it's my pleasure to uh, present Trudy Hernandez, uh, president of the Mojave Military Museum. Thank you, Mayor and City Council members. Mojave Military Museum is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. Board members are full-time Lake Havasu residents, including Greg Logan, retired Navy and military advisor leading tonight's pledge, and valued board member David Diaz. My name is Trudy Hernandez. I was born on an Air Force base, the daughter of a wartime veteran. I shared that information with a veteran who told me I can do one better. I was conceived on an Air Force base. And <laughs> loved it. All kidding aside, though, today I am president of Mojave Military Museum Nonprofit, where we are chronicling the polished and the worn. Many Mojave County residents have their own military museums in their homes. Our museum has an important role to play, not only in preserving material, but also making these items available to the public. We are proudly recognized by the Museum Association of Arizona, the Arts Action Fund, and American Alliance of Museums. Currently, we are located and quite welcomed right downstairs in the new municipal courthouse with authentic items generously contributed by Mojave County residents, businesses, veterans, and their families. Mojave Military Museum's Through the Perilous Fight exhibit features authentic U.S. military photos, documents, and books curated from World War I through the Gulf Wars. We extend our thanks to Judge Kay and the Veterans Resource Team for believing in our mission and partnership. All exhibits are free and open to the public during normal business hours. Nothing has been purchased. We also wish to express our sincere appreciation and gratitude to all the veterans and their families whose US military treasures appear in our exhibits. Men and women who warmly welcomed us into their homes, patiently discussed with us their stories, and expressed interest in what we were doing, offering us encouragement and repeat contributions. Together, our efforts are extremely unifying. Each and every time, we are humbled by this privilege. These families have chosen to rescue, save, and have us restore these items, enabling our aim to educate, curate, honor, and preserve, 
ensuring their preservation adds to the educational flavor of our community. Mojave Military Museum is the grateful recipient of con contributions from the Lake Havasu Elkettes, Elks Lodge 2399, and the Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 975. We also have a permanent military display featured at the Lake Havasu Senior Center, again, connecting us all to what may have been lost. We look forward to honoring those who served during Lake Havasu City's Vietnam Veterans Day this Friday at the Friends of the Fair Rodeo Grounds at Sarah Park, where in community service, we join the Elks in preparing lunch. Again, it is always an honor and a privilege remembering their legacies. As we enter our fourth year, fourth year already, we are seeking a small donated storage space for our archives. We can be reached at mmmsalute at gmail.com and for more information to arrange for donations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And Ms. Hernandez also curated the display down here at the Municipal Courthouse. So please take a look at that uh, uh, one of uh, these days when you're in this building. So today's an exciting day here in Lake Havasu City. Uh, today's our first public meeting and council meeting in the new multi-purpose room at the courthouse, which we sit in today. Uh, going forward, we'll meet in this room uh, located on the second level of the Municipal Courthouse at 92 Acoma Boulevard. Uh, there's a, a beautiful staircase and also an elevator to bring folks up to uh, this public space. Uh, this opportunity occurred because of the need for our first municipal courthouse. For many years, we operated our courthouse in a consolidated court system with the Superior Court, the Justice Court, uh, and our court. However, as our community grew and the number of cases and trials for all of our courts grew, uh, we were running out of space to operate all three courts in that consolidated manner. The courts deconsolidated in 2019 and work was put in motion to find a space that would accommodate our needs to provide municipal court services and meet the financial resources that we had available. We looked at uh, renting a vacant storefront. Remember, this was 2019 when there actually was some vacant uh, storefronts. Uh, and we have vacant space. Uh, we also looked at building a new building on the City Hall uh, campus. And then the opportunity with the space where we sit today became available when longtime business owners and community members, Jack and Dale Bailey, decided to retire and sell this building. The city was able to purchase the building and started planning uh, the planning process to complete the renovations to turn this building into a space that would allow us to provide exceptional court services to our citizens, but still provide room for growth. Uh, through careful planning and budgeting, we were able to complete this project on schedule and we were able to pay for the entire project with cash. So this entire building uh, is paid for. I, I would like to thank my colleagues uh, on the City Council for their continued support to make that happen and allocating the proper monies to do that. Uh, the courthouse project has involved uh, team members throughout our entire organization. So the collaboration of our team from development services, public works, engineering, administrative services, IT, the city manager's office, the city attorney's office, our courts uh, department, and more has been amazing, and their collective efforts can be seen throughout the project as you make your way through this building. I would like to thank uh, Jonathan Basquette and, and the IT team from the city, uh, our city clerk, Kelly Williams, and Steve Blake for all of their efforts to bring all of the technology together so that we can host the meeting here this afternoon. Um, I'd like to thank all of our team members and the departments that had a hand in making this project a reality. Um, also, thank you to the selected contractor, FCI, and the architect, DFDG, that worked locally with Selberg and Associates. Uh, the efforts of the contractor, architect, and city staff have allowed us to stay on schedule and on budget uh, and create a municipal courthouse and public meeting gathering space that we can all be proud of. Um, I'd also like to express my gratitude to Mr. Knudsen, uh, Judge Kalali, and Colleen Laurie and her team, uh, for, um, and also the project team, which was led by Phil Porter, who's with us this evening. Welcome, uh, Phil. Uh, for your thoughtful and innovative discussions, analysis, and review to ensure that we built a state-of-the-art courthouse that will meet our needs today and the needs of the future. Uh, the Ingenuity provided a very cost-effective courthouse and community space that we are gathered here this afternoon. Um, again, I'd like to thank uh, Judge Kalali and Colleen uh, and the project manager for opening up this space throughout all of the different design elements. Uh, they offered different tours to citizens throughout the entire process of the renovation. So any group, organization, or citizen that wanted uh, to tour at any stage was invited in uh, and provided with a tour. And those efforts allowed our citizens to be a part of this project and able to see their tax dollars at work in real time. 
So tonight, I'd like to welcome you all to our new council chambers. Again, we'll meet here going forward. Uh, we're at 92 Acoma Boulevard, located in the municipal courthouse on the second level. Uh, there is a staircase and an elevator to take you. Uh, we do have ample parking in the parking lot here at the courthouse, but there is additional uh, parking over at our city hall parking lot as well with a connected pathway that can take you here on days that we have meetings that might bring a larger attendance. For those of you in the room, uh, hopefully you're sitting in a little bit more of a comfortable seat than uh, was in our previous room and there's more space. Uh, so it's a much more comfortable space for us all to be in. So again, thank you and welcome to our new uh, city council chambers. The next item on our agenda is the roll call. Ms. Williams, if you please call the roll. Council members, Nancy Campbell. Here. Michelle Lynn. Here. Jenny Koch. Here. Jim Dolan. David Lane. Here. Vice Mayor Cameron Moses. Here. Mayor Cal Sheehy. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Item five is our consent agenda. Would any of the council members like to remove any of the items for separate discussion? Mayor. Yeah, council Member Koch. Motion. Please. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion from council Member Koch and a second from Vice Mayor Moses. Moses. If uh, we could change the computer screen around. All right, is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item six is correspondence, communications, petitions, announcements, and the city manager report. We'll start with item 6.1, which is announce vacancies on Lake Havasu City Boards, Committees, and Commissions. Ms. Williams. Mayor and City Council, there are several vacancies on Lake Havasu City Boards, Committees, and Commissions. The following is a listing of those vacancies. Board of Adjustment, one regular member, two alternate members. The Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, one student member. Anyone interested can pick up a packet at City Hall, and they are also available on the city's website at lhcaz.gov. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is item 6.2, which is a presentation from the Mojave County Department of Public Health regarding the Community Health Needs Assessment. Danny Lagana, who's the Special Programs Analyst with Mojave County Department of Public Health, will be giving the presentation. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so today we are talking about the Community Health Needs Assessment. Basically, it's a survey where we're asking our citizens to engage and help us identify areas for health improvement. Today, we'll, it's very brief, I promise, just an overview of what the top three um, concerns were for Havasu in 2020 and how you can help share your voice. Um, so basically, we team up with Kingman Regional Medical Center. It's something they have to do for the IRS as a nonprofit, but this covers all of Mojave County. Um, it's a requirement for us as well to maintain our accreditation, but it also goes beyond that. It helps us identify and fulfill gaps in services. We also team up with them because uh, staffing is limited, so it's me and, and them. Um, so we are allowed to, our partnership helps us. We're not duplicating services, and we're pooling our resources. Originally, it was open till end of March. We don't have, not e we don't even have 10% of our population responding yet, so we've extended it to end of April. This is is the original timeline as you can see on the screen um, like I said it's been extended so the highlighted area is no longer accurate um, but we are also simultaneously working on key informant interviews so any person that wants to be a somebody to be interviewed for that you can email me and I'll have that information um, at the end of this presentation I've also passed out some QR cards on the back of that also has my email address if you want some more information or be a part of it um, another effort to make sure that we are providing this information and access to these surveys is we are leveraging our partners and going anywhere and everywhere that we possibly can. I've been along with our mobile health unit in all the rural areas. Um, as you can see on the screen, we also have our hard copy surveys, both in English and Spanish, at all of our Mojave County Library branches, the nursing offices, and we're all the way up to Colorado City. So we're trying to make our rounds and make sure this is accessible, and every single event that's been happening in Mojave County, um, we're also there with our laptop and then QR cards. So this is just a quick list we've actually added since creating this presentation. Um, but 
concerns and uh, I, 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 items that were prioritized for Lake Havasu, actually from all, all Mojave counties are here, mental health, substance use disorders, teen pregnancy, access to health care and social services, food insecurity, housing and transportation. These were all across the board, every city in 2020 concerns. For Lake Havasu, mental health, substance use disorder and health care and social services were also identified. The more information that we receive from our community members, the more we can identify and measure the information in these needs assessments goes on our website, but it's also used by a lot of our nonprofits. They use it to try to get funding. We've had um, somebody come from uh, call us from Phoenix and say, you know what, this we're, we're a mental health research team and we're noticing across the board and all the rural areas, mental health and lack of providers is a concern and an issue. And so they're taking this information that we're putting in black and white and they're able to identify what are our needs. But it also helps us identify community champions and together we can work and try to help uh, like guide some of this conversation and get people to help us help them, basically. So these are our next steps. We are currently in the survey process. Again, that's extended till end of April, key informant interviews, and then the next step is focus groups. So I'm going to be all of June um, throughout Mojave County doing focus groups. I don't have a location for Havasu set up yet, but as soon as I do, I will share that. Um, everyone's welcome to join that, and it just really helps us um, identify, and it's again, the voice of the community that we're looking for. This is an opportunity for community members to tell the government what they need. So um, we are here to ask everybody to please take 10 minutes. If you're sitting getting your oil changed or you're waiting for your nail appointment, scan that QR code. Um, we, we need as many responses as we can get. We've, we're almost at 950, which has bypassed the last two uh, survey cycles. However, it's still not 10% of our population. So there's my email and phone number. And then that's the QR code. So anybody that wants to be a part of it, please scan that. If you want more information on the previous health needs assessment, this is the link to that. It's also in my email, and I'm happy to forward that. It's very difficult to find on our website, so I will uh, personally send it if anybody wants it. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Danny. I appreciate it. Thank you for all the work you're doing on the community health uh, needs you. assessment. And certainly we encourage all citizens to participate in the survey to make sure that the needs of Lake Havasu City are, are addressed through that process. So thank you. Thank you. All right. The next item on the agenda is item 6.3, which is our city manager report. Good evening, Mr. Knudsen. Uh, good evening, Mayor. Good evening, uh, Council. Um, we're deeply saddened by the loss of one of our lifeguards. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Knudsen, we might actually need to just switch uh, the, oh. the boards real quick and then... Sure. Okay. Take one second here. Okay. Apologize for that. Um, again, we're deeply saddened by the loss of one of our uh, our lifeguards. His name was uh, Seth Crick. Um, Seth went above and beyond for this uh, community, not just as a lifeguard, but also as a Boy Scout, an Eagle Scout, and a Sea Scout. Uh, Seth earned his Eagle Scout by building a personal floating device loaner station at Site 6, Site six Launch Ramp to encourage safe boating and reduce drownings in the lower Colorado River. He'll be missed. But it leaves behind a legacy of loyalty, integrity, and friendship to this community, as an Eagle Scout and a Sea Scout would. Um, our sincere condolences go out to his family and friends. We had uh, 253 of Lake Havasu City's teens participate in Teen Break 2024, which uh, took place uh, March 19th uh, through the 21st, just last week. A big thank you goes out to Pastor Tony of Abundant Grace Church, uh, of course, our Parks and Recreation staff, our police cadets, uh, CERT for all the work they did, the Elks Club, and Havasu Sports Flyers for making the event so successful. A thank you to the local businesses for their donation of food, merchandise, and products. We had over $10,000 in monetary donations that were received from Abundant Grace Church, from the Lions Club, Eagles Club, Buses by the Bridge, Women of the Moose, and many other clubs and organizations. Thank you to all that... Uh, participated in making teen break a fun time for our teens in our community. And there was a lot for them to do uh, in those, uh, those three days. A lot has happened the last few weeks, uh, including Mayor, you attended the Havasu Memorial Walkway Ceremony, uh, where hundreds of community members attended to honor uh, educators, veterans, pioneers, and others whose bricks were recently installed. Mayor, you attended the Bridge of the World exhibit at ASU and said a few words to kick off the event. The exhibit showcased ASU Sun Devils currently attending ASU Lake Havasu, 
from 27 different countries. 27 different countries are represented at ASU Lake Havasu. Uh, they showcase their cultures, traditions, customs, and practices. Uh, countries include um, China, Japan, India, Kenya, Nigeria, Vietnam, and uh, um, um, more countries than just what I can list here today. Um, and just last week, Governor Katie Hobbs visited various individuals and groups in Lake Havasu City. Uh, we met with her briefly here in this room to discuss various city-related topics, including housing solutions, water, um, and our relationships with the Arizona State Land Department and the Arizona uh, Parks Department. She also met with other organizations, such as Havasu Community Health Foundation, uh, with the State Parks, uh, MCC, and the Chamber of Commerce, PED, and Go Lake Havasu. Mayor Yu and Vice Mayor uh, uh, Moses presented the Lake Havasu, Lake Havasu School District Teacher of the Year Proclamation to Courtney Zampogna at Starline Elementary School. Uh, Courtney earned the overall designation because she makes her classroom and school a better place for students from all backgrounds and abilities. Courtney lives out the ideals of what it means to be an accomplished educator and go above and beyond in her role in our professional and, and uh, in our professional learning community as an, a national board pre-candidacy coach and advisor of many extracurricular activities, including student council and uh, camp invention, just to name uh, two. So congratulations uh, to you, Courtney. Other teachers that earned the teacher of the year at their respective schools included Tamara Cornell from Nautilus. We had uh, Michelle Button from Habasupai. Kelsey Kendrick from Jamaica, Sage Best from Oro Grande Classical Academy, uh, Brianne uh, Lauderback from Smoke Tree, Allison Finnegan from Thunderbolt Middle School, and Julie Zemolt, Zem, 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 Zemetel, thank you, uh, Zemetel from Lake Havasu High School. Congratulations to uh, each and every one of you. Uh, Mayor, in, <clears throat> in honor of Women's History Month, you joined MCC for the inaugural hosting of the first flag on the special interest flagpole located between 600 and 500 buildings at Lake, Lake Havasu City Campus. Republic Services is hosting another free residential household hazardous waste event on Saturday, April 20th, 2024. That'll be from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. This event is open to Lake Havasu City residents and takes place at Fire Station 2, which is located at 2065 North Kiowa Boulevard. Uh, please save the date and plan to take advantage of this opportunity to dispose of all your hazardous items from your home. We normally have this event in the uh, um, December time frame, so this is the first time we're going to do a uh, add add to the um, to the events. So we'll have two per year, so an April and a, a December. Um, so if you have any questions, please contact Republic Services at 505-7410. But looking forward to that event. A reminder that city offices are closed on Friday, March 29th. In observance of Good Friday, uh, police and fire departments, their services are always unaffected. However, administrative offices will be closed and the city will resume normal schedules on Monday, April 1st. The Aquatic Center and Community Center are closed on Friday, March 29th as well. And then also, although city offices are closed, the city will still be <clears throat> very much looking forward to hosting the Vietnam Veteran Day Outdoor Cookout event at, uh, on, of course, on March 29th. The event is held at the Friends of the Fair Rodeo Grounds off Dub Campbell Way on, at Sarah Park. Uh, the gate opens at uh, 1030 a.m. This is an event that's produced by a committee of local, um, various local veteran organizations. The venue is sponsored by Friends of the Fair. Uh, we'll have uh, hot dogs and, and uh, other fixings, um, and th that's sponsored by the Elks Lodge 2399. And there will be uh, music, uh, which is provided by the VFW and the VFW Auxiliary Post 9401. And with that, uh, Mayor and Council, that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Knudsen. We'll move on to item seven, which is our public hearings. Uh, during the public hearings uh, this evening, we have four of them, but there will be an opportunity for citizens to address the City Council on the items that are on the agenda. There is a light indicator on the screen. So the screens around you, when it's uh, time for uh, the public hearing, it will be on the screens this year, or this year, this time, at this new building. Um, and then it will change colors and do some things we're gonna learn together. And then it's gonna make a sound. It's gonna sound, I think, like a gong tonight, but we're gonna hopefully change that for, for future meetings. Uh, but so just bear with us on it. We'll know the time, but you'll, you'll have three minutes uh, for, for feedback during uh, that process. 
There will be a call to the public at the end of the meeting. I'll go over the, the guidelines for that, but call to the public is not an opportunity for us to have a two-way conversation. So if you want to talk about anything on the agenda, please do so at each of the items. We'll start at item 7.1, which is approve a change order number one for the construction of Vados Well number nine as part of the Vados Zone Well 8 and Facilities Rebid Project with Schofield Civil Construction LLC. Mr. Hart. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and City Council. I'm honored to be your first public hearing, so thank you. And what better thing to talk about than uh, recycling in a big way and the way the city is striving to do that. So I'm here this evening to recommend approval of change order number one for the construction of Vados Well 9 as part of the Vados Zone Well 8 facilities rebid project with Schofield Civil Construction. Uh, as most of you are familiar, our north water, our wastewater treatment plant is up uh, by the airport, and that is where our Betos wells are located. Currently, we have seven Betos wells that are just to the north of that existing road that you're seeing, and we are now moving forward with building uh, Betos Well 9, where that star is located. That was part of our base bid. And at the time, we did not have uh, the resources available to award what was an additive alternate to that bid. That was uh, Betos Well 9, which uh, would get us another Betos Well approximately 48 inches in diameter, 180 feet. Uh, not the actual facilities on top, but the well itself. So we were able to uh, locate some funds recently. We approached the contractor to ask if they would continue to honor their, their bid that they originally submit, which they did. And so we're looking at doing uh, Betos Well number nine, uh, about 300 feet from where Betos Well eight is. And we're really excited to have this opportunity to be able to increase our, our Betos Well. Did it go out? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so in this picture here, you see we have the ex existing Betos Wells. If you were to drive out there, you would see these ramp structures there on the upper left with the, uh, the fence around and that actually is our Betos Well. And when the activity starts, you'll see a similar vehicle as, as what's there with the boring machine that will go down approximately 180 feet. They can move pretty fast. We believe that they'll be able to have uh, the Betos Well 8 done in, in terms of the drilling component and all that with three weeks. And then we'll move on uh, to the next one. Then we have to, of course, bring the piping to it and all the electrical and the facilities part of that. The uh, change order adds, as I shared, the drilling of Well 9 to the existing contract. Uh, as a result, when we were advertising the project, we had said, should we award add alternate one, we would add an additional 20 days. So we'll go ahead and add another 20 days, making a total of 100 calendar days, which gives us an anticipated completion of July 10th, 2024. The change order cost itself is $852,000, yeah, $850. So we are, again, excited about being able to um, uh, obtain additional funding to cover this uh, very much needed uh, aspect of this project. With that, I will go ahead and take questions, should you have any. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Are there any questions from members of the council? Sure. Yeah, Vice Mayor Moses. Yeah, can you expand upon just the benefit of the, what these Vado swells basically do for our, uh, our water system? Yes, yeah, so as you are aware, um, our water treatment, we generate water and our wastewater treatments deal with the after effects of that water. And what we're able to do is go through a reclaim process and then we got to get rid of the, the reclaimed water that we have. And we have several ways that we, we do that through uh, co commingling ponds, both located at the island and at the Mulberry Treatment Facility. We have um, contracts, uh, uh, piping that goes out to various um, golf courses where we disperse reclaim water and then we have our beto swells there at the the um, north wastewater treatment plant and we utilize those as well so it's very viable because we actually when we use our what well, beto swells which are injection wells is what we call them we're able to send that reclaim water back down to the ground and if you will re um, charge the aquifer so it's, it's a very nice, nice benefit. Are there any additional questions from members of council? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to council for discussion or possible motion. 
Mayor, motion. Yeah, Councilmember Lane. I move to approve change order number one for the construction of Vados Well 9 as part of the Vados Zone Well 8 and Facilities Rebed Project with Schofield Civil Construction LLC in the amount of $852,850. Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Lane and a second from Vice Mayor Moses. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 7.2 is approved task order number seven to the Master Professional Services Agreement to CNS Engineers Inc. for construction management services for the airport obstructions light mark remove existing hydrants and replace project. Mr. Wolf. Good night. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, this this project was before you at uh, the last uh, meeting where we actually awarded the contract for the construction. The construction is, is for um, the hydrant replacements that are above ground at the airport right now. And to remove those obstructions, uh, we received a grant uh, to put them in a different uh, setting, which is underground. Um, the project scope uh, of the project, just as a reminder, CNS Engineers was successful in a grant application on the city's behalf. Uh, the city entered to that intergovernmental agreement with ADOT in April of 21. Uh, the project consists of uh, replacement of seven hydrants, valves, and pipe appurtenances to a below grade setting, increasing the safety for airport operational safety. Uh, on February 27th, which was uh, the meeting uh, in which we uh, awarded the construction contract to Craig Plumbing, local contractors of Lake Havasu City in the amount of 292980 or 60. Um, excuse me. Uh, it's recommended City Council now award the construction management services. And this was important part. We wanted to make sure we had the award of the contract first before awarding any construction management services. That amount uh, we negotiated with CNS engineers for 77208000 for oversight of the work within the airport operations area and managing that construction under FAA guidelines. A little higher level than what we would normally uh, provide for inspection services for um, out of the engineering department. Um, the funding for this, as a reminder, is 90% ADOT grant and 10% ADOT fund or airport funds. Here's a quick setting. Uh, there are below ground connections where the fire department can pop the uh, lid and actually um, get a quick connection to the underground uh, hydrant and provide fire services uh, with that below ground setting. I'll open it up. Uh, remind you this picture was taken recently, provided by the airport ma manager. Uh, it's when the airport was full here recently with the uh, event in Vegas, we had several private jets uh, on our tarmac. Anyway, I'm open up for any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Wolf. Why didn't we do the construction management contract at the time of awarding the construction? We were still uh, vehemently negotiating that contract. It was uh, quite a bit higher. Uh, we looked at sharing some of the work with the airport uh, facilities um, uh, Paul up there uh, would be able to provide some of those services, thereby reducing the overall cost a little bit. We were just not ready uh, to put all that together when I brought the award for the construction. Okay. Yeah, because the, the amount is uh, generally like a, as a rule of thumb, 10 to 15 percent of, of the construction project, and it's obviously considerably more than that, even what's presented after the negotiation. So the, that's because of the technicalities that are involved is... Two things, both the technicalities, but the dollar amount we initially saw was um, a little high. Uh, we went back and said, how can we get that reduced? Because that, that amount usually does hover around 10 to 12%. Um, we, uh, rather than not go with CNS, uh, because of their experience uh, in airport operation safety area and their uh, familiarity with FAA guidelines on what can and what can't happen uh, they're in the airport safety area. So um, it, it did take a little time to get there. We did see, finally see the benefit and the fact that we were 10% um, uh, out of our funds 
and CNS actually does all of the uh, grant uh, reimbursement and that part of the management as well as the project. We thought it was a fair shake by the time we finished, but that was after my deadline to get it to the council that night. Thank you. Are there other questions from members of the council for Mr. Wolf? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone would like to address the city council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to council for discussion or possible motion. Mayor. Council Member Dolan. Motion. Please. I move to approve task order number seven to the Master Professional Services Agreement with CNS Engineers Incorporated for construction management services for the airport obstructions light mark, remove existing hydrants and replace project in the amount of $77,208. Second. We have a motion from Council Member Dolan and a second from Vice Mayor Moses. Is there any additional discussion? Hearing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item 7.3 is approve the cooperative purchase agreement and purchase of one 2024 F650 regular cab 4x2 from Santan Auto Partners, LLC. Mr. Young. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Is that better? Can't hear me? Got to be closer. Bring it up to you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're here to, to request permission for a budgeted purchase of the 2024 F650. Um, this is a little larger vehicle uh, for our bigger Vactor trailers and other heavier trailers that are currently being towed by a dump truck, which is too much. So uh, we'd like to add this one to the fleet and it would be through the Santan Cooperative, and it would be for $84,821.30. If there's any other questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Young. Are there any questions from members of the council? Mayor? Vice Mayor Moses? I mean, those are some big trucks. How, what, what kind of equipment are you hauling? Uh, we recently purchased uh, a larger uh, Vermeer Vactor trailer um, that weighs considerably too much for our 450s to haul. And uh, the F550s are our service trucks and are, and are on call around the city. So that frees up them. And then it frees up our dump truck as we uh, need them as well. So it allows the heavier trailers to be towed with something other than a dump truck. Okay. Are there any additional questions? All right, this is a public hearing. Would anyone like to address the city council on this item? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back to council for discussion or possible motion. Mayor. Vice Mayor Moses. Yeah, motion. Please. I move to approve and authorize the city manager to execute the cooperative purchase agreement with Santan Auto Partners, LLC, with a termination date of January 17, 2025. Authorize the city staff to exercise the option to renew the agreement for up to a maximum of 48 months and authorize the purchase of a 2024 F650 regular cab 4x2 vehicle in the amount of $84,821.30. Subject to release of any amended manufacturer's official published pricing and discount off of the manufacturer's retail price by the Arizona State Purchasing Office and further authorize the city manager to approve and amend adjustment. Second. We have a motion from Vice Mayor Moses, a second from Council Member Dolan. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. And then our final public hearing this evening is item 7.4, approve the cooperative purchase of two 2024 F550 regular cab 4x2 and one 2024 Ford Expedition four-door 4x4 UTV from San Tan Auto Partners, LLC. Mr. Young. Yes, the two F550s will be for water again. Um, that'll be uh, 
wrapping up their purchases for this year for to replace the one ton service trucks that are uh, failing quickly. Uh, each of these um, service trucks that are being replaced are at uh, 45 points or better. Uh, we do re recommend replacement at 32 points. Um, they have far exceeded uh, their value at this point. The expedition is replacing the Suburban that got uh, cut from us from Midway Chevrolet as allocations didn't allow for them to give us one. Uh, they didn't build very many Suburbans this year apparently is what we were told. Uh, the expedition does have the eight seats and matches what was requested. So uh, recommending that um, for purchase as well. If there's any other questions, I'll be more than happy to answer those. Uh, thank you, Mr. Young. Are there any questions from members of the council for Mr. Young? Seeing none, this is a public hearing, but anyone would like to address the city council on this item? Pretty cool, I don't have to move it. But I actually think these are sensitive, so you're gonna to have to bring it down closer really? to you. Yes. Hurts us. Yeah. Hi, Bonnie Toy. Um, I do have a question, and that is a couple of questions. The first question I have is, one, how many vehicles do they have to replace all the time? Two, are they replacing the vehicles matching similar to similar? So like a single wide to a single wide, whatever. And... Um, is there an easier way to streamline the process so you don't have to pay somebody to keep coming and asking you guys for this stuff? Yes, yeah, a great question. So I'll just answer it from a very global perspective. Uh, through the budgeting process, uh, the city council allocates money. Anything uh, per city code that's over $50,000 from one vendor needs to get city council approval. Uh, we will look at streamlining the vehicle purchase uh, process uh, so that we limit the number of, of times that they have to come before council in, in subsequent years. Uh, but uh, they do replace like for like, but there are times when we're purchasing brand new vehicles for brand new positions. So we increased code enforcement, for example, that person needed a vehicle which would not have been a replacement vehicle, it would have been a new vehicle for that person. So, uh, but otherwise it generally is like for like, unless there is um, some operational difference, like Mr. Young explained in this case, or in the case of the, the item previous to this, uh, where the, the 650 is, is a service vehicle that will work and, and need to free up some of our other vehicles that are on call and our dump truck. So, so I, I unpacked a lot of things in your question, but from a very global, global perspective, yes, it's like for like. Thank you. You're welcome. Would anyone else like to address the city council on this item? All right, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to council for discussion or possible motion. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Council Member Lynn. Can I ask a question? Is there a reason why we lumped these vehicle purchases together? Because I remember the second one on the, uh, the four-door expedition, that that's the one that for city employees, why did we lump these together? So I, I believe it was the timing. So this is just vehicle purchases. The vendor's the same. And uh, because the vehicle that was already approved by city council for the uh, uh, city hall fleet uh, vehicle was not available, they needed to have council action to adjust that. Yes, I understand that. So I'm troubled by this because when we voted on this the first time, I voted no on that vehicle. And so if I vote no on this, then I'm voting no on the two other ones also, correct? Yes. Yeah, this would be one item. Unless you present a different motion that uh, approves the ones that you're in support of and, uh, and not the ones that you aren't. But there, so there, you, you have that ability. Are there any other questions or, or comments from members of council? Would you like to make a motion, Council Member Lynn? <laughs> well, I don't think it'll be approved the way that I want to do. I, I wish that it was two different items because it was already the majority that everybody else wanted to vote that way, so it's gonna be turned on anyway. So, it, no, I just wish it would have been two different agenda items. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Mayor, motion. 
Yes, please. Councilmember Lane. I move to approve the cooperative purchase of two 2024 F550 regular cab XL 4x2 vehicles and one 2024 Ford Expedition four-door 4x4 UTV in the amount of $209,256.98 from Santan Auto Partners, LLC, subject to release of any amended manufacturer's official publishing pricing and discount off of the manufacturer's retail price by the Arizona State Purchasing Office and authorize the city manager to improve an amended adjustment. We have a motion from Councilmember Lane, a second from Councilmember Dolan. Is there any additional discussion? Seeing none, we're ready to vote. Motion carries six to one. Thank you. All right, the next item is item eight, which this is our call to the public. This is where citizens have the opportunity to address the city council on items within the jurisdiction of Lake Havasu City. This is the area where we can't have a two-way conversation, but uh, we can listen intently to whatever your comments or feedback may be. Uh, we can respond to any criticism that uh, may uh, arise. Your comments are limited to three minutes. Um, or less. Again, there is going to be a light indicator screen on the screens. Uh, it changes color and uh, makes a, a noise that sounds like a gong today, but uh, hopefully it will change for future meetings. Uh, you don't have to sign up for Call to Public, but we did have one citizen do so. So we'll start with Ms. Uh, Joan DeZero, and then we'll open up to anyone else. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I Tonight, I just wanted to address you as a thank you to your public works department. I was driving home on Saturday, came up Daytona, and the water was up over the curbs. And I thought, well, this is a little more than a swimming pool that's being emptied. So I immediately went to the website. I made a report. I got an almost immediate response. They it opened a work order. And the next thing I know, they had a flooded sign up, and the water was gone. It was fixed in a short order. And I even got a response that there had been a main break, and they'd fixed it. And this was on a weekend. So with water being such a precious resource, I really appreciate that they were there on the weekend. They addressed it so quickly. And as a resident, I knew what was going on and how it was fixed. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of them in the Public Works Department for that. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the City Council during call to the public? Good evening, Mayor and Council members. I couldn't pass up this opportunity to say hi. I still haven't seen Don Wisdom Courthouse sign yet. But anyhow, I think you guys are doing it. I think we're kind of overloaded on vehicles. Seem like we've been buying a lot of vehicles lately. But anyhow, good work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wisdom. Would anyone else like to address the City Council during call to the public? Seeing none, we'll close the call to the public. Moving on to the next item on our agenda is current events. Are there any council committee reports? Mr. Mayor. Yeah, Council Member Lynn. Yes, um, I attended our WACOG executive meeting um, a couple weeks ago where we approved the Regional Transportation Implementation Plan, which is a plan that provides long-term regional vision and plan to improve public transportation and regional mobility, specifically here in Mojave County between the three main cities and surrounding areas. The plan focuses on areas that need to be addressed in transit services and gaps in areas of needs. So I'm hopeful that this study will lead to solutions for needed services in rural transportation in our area. And some of the um, most used in the survey would be for social and health services in between the cities, transportation for students attending higher education, and transportation for employees traveling between the cities, and also for our shoppers that want to go in between the cities. So um, I'm excited to see where that goes. I just wanted to share with that today. Thank you, Councilmember Lynn. And for uh, members of the council and citizens, you can find that plan at the WACOG website. So the Western Area Council of Governments, WACOG. Uh, you can go to their website and there's a drop down menu where you can read the, the transportation implementation plan that Councilmember Lynn mentioned. Thank you. Are there any other council committee reports? All right, uh, item 10, our future meetings. Our next meeting is going to be Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, 5.30 p.m. It's a regular meeting. And then we'll have our uh, budget work session on Thursday, April 11th, that same week, 2024, at 9 a.m. It'll be a budget and CIP, a capital improvement plan overview work session. And then on Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024, at 5.30 p.m., we'll have a regular meeting. 
Uh, all of those meetings again will be at 92 Acoma Boulevard uh, at the new community room city council chambers at the municipal courthouse. Item 11, are there any future discussion items? Item 12, motion to adjourn. So moved. We are adjourned. Thank you for being here. Be kind and we'll see you next time.